Hey folks, Colin here from Something's Recording, and welcome back to breaking down a full mix. Today, in this video, we're gonna be looking at the background vocal mix. We're gonna be breaking down how to mix background vocals into a rock track today, but before we dive in, if you are ready to go a little bit deeper into the vocal mixing process and really start to hone your EQ strategy, then I have just the thing for you. It is my ultimate guide to vocal EQ, and it's just a simple PDF that will walk you through how to EQ your vocals step by step to help you get polished and professional sounding vocal mixes without any more of the guesswork. It is a completely free guide, and you can download it below using the link in the video description. Now let's jump in here and take a look at the background vocal mix. Of course, let me start by playing you the finished mix here so you can hear what the track sounds like and how the background vocals fit into the song. And then I'll solo up the background vocal parts here and you can hear what they sound like uh, just soloed. So here's our finished mix for this song. So you can hear it's a very full, deep sort of sound. It's kind of haunting background vocals that we have uh, running through most of the track here. They pretty much just dip out for the verse sections and the high ones stay in almost all the way through the track here to give it that kind of haunting, verbed out sort of sound uh, that's always hanging with us in the background. So let's look at the three plugins we've got going on here. I'm gonna take the reverb and the compressor off. We're gonna look at just our EQ to start here. Only a couple moves going on on the EQ. The first one, of course, uh, as is tradition with me on an EQ, first move we're doing is a high pass filter. I'm rolling off a ton of the bottom end here because I don't need any of that coming through on background vocals. And I very rarely like bottom end coming out uh, the side speakers here. And all these background vocals, uh, as you can see, are wide panned. So I don't want any bottom end and I don't want a lot of low mid information coming through on these background vocals either. I want them to be uh, high, I want them to be lush, and I want them to have that verbed out sound that's not too heavy and it doesn't add mud to the stereo spectrum here. So take a listen without the high pass and then with it. We're at 240 hertz here, 12 dB per octave. Oh. Just making sure we don't get any kind of buildup in the bottom end here. We've got a big stack of vocals, so any kind of breaths or anything like that in between our vocal passes can build up down there in the sub area. So we're wiping all of that off here and moving a little bit up into the low mid area as well, just to trim some of that back there. The next move we're making is another cut here. We're at 615 hertz and it's about a five dB cut. We're cut, pulling out 4.8 dB here. Now, this is because these kind of, these are kind of set a little bit higher, so there's a buildup going on in the mid-range here. Let me play this for you. I'll put the cut in, and then I'll boost it up so you can hear the frequency range that we're reducing here. So here's without the cut. Oh. You can hear there's a lot of information going on in this five, six, 700 hertz area, and we didn't need all of that taking up so much space in our mix, so pulling some of that out leaves a lot more room in these background vocals for the top end to shine. Now before we go up boosting the top end, I'm gonna flip forward here and we're gonna add in our compressor. I like to get rid of the frequencies we don't need first, then add compression to even out uh, whatever the input signal is, so vocals, background vocals, whatever, and then come back and boost high end into the compressor here. So I'm using this 1176 style compressor and normally I would reach for an LA-2A style compressor, 
but I wanted a little bit more control on these background vocals. And if, if we look here at the stack, you can see there's this kind of swell at the end that I wanted some, some control over. And we have some parts that jump out a little bit more than smoother background vocals. So I'm opting for this to gain that extra volume control and that extra e sense of evenness across the background vocals here. Attack is set at 0.55 milliseconds, a little bit of a glare on the computer there. And then we've got the release set all the way fast at 50 milliseconds. I'm opting for the slowest ratio here, so four to one, or the smallest ratio, four to one, but still pretty aggressive of a ratio. Just pushing our input up till we're getting three to five dB reduction on these bigger parts of the vocal, and then pulling our output down to even out the volume in and out of the compressor. So without it, and then I'll kick it in. Oh. So you can hear we get some thickness back from using this compressor, which is one of the reasons I love it so much. It does add a sense of warmth and thickness to whatever you're pushing into it. But we gain that volume evenness across the stack of background vocals. We're not completely neutering our dynamics because you can hear the background vocals kind of swell up and down. We're keeping that intact. We don't want to ruin that and kind of pin our background vocals. But we gain some volume consistency so you can hear the background vocals all the way through on the sides of our mix here. Now let's go back and we've got two boosts we're adding up on the top end. The first one is up at, oh, wrong frequency range. First one's up at 9K, 9.22K. We're adding about 3 dB here. This is gonna give us that sense of air up on the top end. So take a listen without and then with the boost. You can hear that's that pretty top end, that pretty air that we wanna hear spread wide on background vocals. So just 3 dB at 9K there. Our other boost is down towards the high mids here. We're at about 3K, 3.03K, adding about 2B, 2 dB, excuse me, 1.92 dB. Some of the high mids here helps make sure you can hear the background vocals in the mix because we've got a lot of instruments going on, lots of guitars, a couple keyboards. So I wanna make sure you can hear the background vocals spread wide here in the mix. Take a listen without the boost and then with it. It's just that little lift there in the high mids to make sure you hear the background vocals across the frequency spectrum there. All right, moving on, last plug-in we have, last piece of the puzzle here, is a reverb. And I actually opted for putting the reverb directly on the vocals here instead of sending out to a, a reverb or an effects chain over here because I wanted to kind of move the vocals back in the mix. So instead of keeping our, our pristine background vocals and then bringing reverb up underneath, I kind of wanted to, to, to soak them into the reverb and push them back in the mix. So we have our frequencies that are gonna help our background vocals cut through the mix, but by kind of putting the reverb on them directly, we're gonna add more of that haunting sort of effect that they have as they're kind of swelling up and down in the background of the track here. Now I'm actually just using uh, the recital hall setting here inside of uh, Studio One's Room Reverb. So it's just a medium sort of haul, and all I've done is taken the pre-delay off of it here. So any kind of medium haul is gonna do you well, two, maybe three seconds if you wanna go any higher there. And then I've mixed it in to 26% here. So listen, I'll do it without the reverb, and then I'll kick it in. So this is 26% uh, wet on the reverb knob.
So you can hear we're getting that sense that we've pushed the vocals back in this bigger hall. To me, it's kind of the difference between you know adding reverb and actually putting uh, the input signal in that room. Just listening to these, then you can kind of picture sitting back in the hall and watching all the singers on the stage as it you know echoes through the hall. Let's put these. Uh, actually, before we put it back in the mix, let me AB all the plugins here so you can hear our complete before and after. So we'll start before. You can hear our raw background vocals, and then I'll kick our plugins, and you can hear where we end up. You can hear we gain a ton of depth while also cleaning up our background vocal sound and adding some of that nice, pretty top end air. Let's throw them back into the mix here and we'll AB one more time and we will be all set here. So for getting background vocals to sit inside of a rock mix here, just a little bit of EQ, rolling off some sub area, pulling out some mid-range buildup, and adding some pretty top end, 8K or 9K here, and 3K to help it cut through. Touch of compression to keep them even here with 1176, and then putting reverb directly on to give them that haunting background sort of vibe. I hope that was helpful for you. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you are ready to take your vocal mixes to the next level and really start perfecting your EQ strategy, then I have just the tool for you and it is completely free. It is my ultimate guide to vocal EQ and you can download it below to start creating more professional vocal mixes in less time. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.